Welcome to Green Ball Extra. I'm Craig Easdown, and with the Test Triangle Interprovincial Series approaching fast and the squads now released, we're going to have a chat to the head coaches. And today is the turn of Northwest Warriors head coach Ian McGregor. Welcome, Ian. Thanks very much, Craig. Before we get into the uh, chat about the Warriors and the season ahead, let's go back a bit and talk about your own playing career. Um, I believe you're an opening batter. Yeah, uh, you're going to go going back a, a fair bit, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, that started off my playing career up in the Northwest here with um, Bally Spallin, uh, which would have been my, my home club, club uh, growing up as a, as a kid. Um, so quite a few enjoyable years there. Uh, work then took me up to, to the Northern Cricket Union for, for five years um, and then when I come back back home if you like and then I started playing with uh, Limavati which would have been my hometown club yeah. uh, so we had a, a fairly successful full run for, for a few years with, with that side so um, with from a, a, I suppose a coaching one eye on, on, on coaching and then moved to, to Coleraine as a sort of player coach role. Uh, and then finally finished up at, at Brigade. Stopped playing about, I think it's six years now. So uh, concentrated fully on the coaching now. Very good. And so it's been um, a decade or more since you've started coaching. What, what attracted you to coaching in the first place? I think it's, it's something that, that I'd always sort of planned to do, to try and stay involved in the game. Obviously, I knew... Um, I played, I played rugby, played senior rugby with, with City of Derry for quite a few years. So uh, playing sport 12 months a year pretty much took a bit of toll on, on the body. So I knew the playing wasn't always going to be, be there. So, um, and I didn't want to walk away just from the game, you know, a game that I loved and a game that I had a lot of passion for. So obviously coaching seemed to be just that natural way of staying involved in the game. So that's, I suppose, that's, that's where it came about. Um, and then my son was playing cricket and he was being picked for um, representative squads and I was doing the usual parent taxi. Uh, like <laughs> hundreds and thousands of parents are doing up and down the country. <laughs> um, and one of the coaches said to me one day, rather than just drop him off and, and going and sitting and having a cup of coffee somewhere, why did you give me a hand? And that that's where it started. So, uh, and thankfully, it was probably one of the best things he ever he ever asked me to do. Very good. Um, so you've been an underage coach at the national level, and you're head coach of the Warriors since 2015. With that experience you've had over the decade or more of coaching, I mean, what what is it that makes a good coach, to your mind? Oh, that's the million dollar question, I suppose. Really, isn't it? And I suppose it's probably one of the intricacies of, of coaching is that you can be a good coach and be totally different from the person next to you. Um, you know, I think the first thing that's important to me um, is to have a philosophy. You, know, you have to have a base as to how you want to go about your business um, and what you as a coach are trying to create. So for me, that's the most important thing, no matter which environment I go into. Uh, it's probably creating that environment because you're working very closely with players. Um, and I try and make sure that it's a, a person first, not the player. So it's trying to get an understanding of, of who they are and what they're trying to do rather than sort of, I suppose, make them into something that I think that they should be. Right. Uh, They've got to be really comfortable with it because, you know, as a coach, you're going to be in, uh, I suppose, scenarios and environments where they're making mistakes. They're there to improve. Part of your role is to help them improve. So they've got to feel, I suppose, comfortable making, making mistakes because, uh, for my mind, th that, that's how they learn. So um, I'm a very, very massive sort of... Um, fan of philosophy and for me that's about creating the environment so that that person can be the best player that they can be. And um, moving forward now to 2020 I mean you must have been pleased to see the Interpros eventually announced as going ahead after a while there it looked like no season but now we've got at least at least some of a season. Have you had a chance to get many training sessions together with the squad yet? 
Yeah, we have. We've been we've been very fortunate. Um, and so once the protocols allowed us, um, the players, as you can imagine, have been very very keen to to get back and, and get involved in cricket. They've been, I suppose, like ourselves, a bit uncertain as to whether they'll actually uh, get the to play any representative cricket this year at all. So um, the minute that we found out that uh, we were good to go, uh, we've had a uh, very good buy-in from, from the players, um, especially with the, the pathway games, as you know, that have, have been ongoing and been getting great coverage from, from Cricket Ireland. So um, we've got our last one today. I know it's a bit later than, than everybody else, but... Um, the Eglinton, who've been hosting the game for us, uh, have been very kind and, and have allowed us to sort of rearrange it to make sure that we get the most out of it. So um, I think we're just tallying up this morning. Uh, over the four games, we've had 32 players who've been involved. Uh, for us up here, I think it's, it's a huge benefit, not only to, to us as a union, but, but to all those players across a, a fairly broad spectrum because we've had 16-year-olds playing with seasoned interprovincial players. So um, i say uh, hugely beneficial for us all. Now, looking back at last year, 2019 was a challenging year for the Warriors. Um, the weather certainly didn't help. I heard Andy McBride once say that uh, it was hard to get some momentum going, really, with uh, so many weather breaks. Um, this year's squad seems a good mix of youth and experience. What do we expect from the Warriors this year, and who should we look out for? Yeah, I think... I'd like to sort of echo those words of, of, of Andy. It, it was very difficult last year for to get any momentum. That every time we we felt that we were just starting to get going, the rain intervened, and you know we're we're sort of back to square one. So, um, as you say, we have a fairly good blend. Obviously, we've got our uh, Irish contracted players uh, who were looking forward to uh, coming back involved in in the squad after that fantastic victory uh, against the world champion so and obviously Craig and, and Andy played a, a huge a huge part in that so it, it's going to be great to get uh, those two Stuart Boyd and, and William obviously back involved with us again so and I suppose at the other end of the scale we've got younger players uh, obviously Nathan Maguire um, is coming to play his cricket for the Northwest uh, Warriors this year so mm-hmm. he's already played one of the pathway games and uh, impressed quite a few people uh, with uh, his display. So uh, excited to, to, to see what, what he can do. Um, we've got, obviously, Will Smeal is back over again with his. Will come over last year. Uh, having played for the Irish under-19s. Um, played a couple of games for us and was very impressive. So um, he's back. And a few, a couple of other... Guys, the younger guys here in the academy, uh, I think could have key roles for us this year in the, in the Warriors and probably Ross Allen, Kyle McGee and obviously Connor Alford has shown great promise over the winter. Uh, so obviously if Boyd um, being there uh, should hopefully be a massive benefit to, to Connor and, and help uh, develop his game. <laughs> Now, you mentioned there the um, fantastic ODI series against England. Moving to that, um, as part of your head coach role, some may be not so aware that you actually are a national selector as well. How do you find that part of your duties? And you must be pleased with the progress of the squad over the last six to 12 months. Yeah, that's probably something that um, I'm not overly keen to to publicise, Craig, given some of the uh, criticism that the the team faces. (laughs) In, in the past, but quite happy now to uh, to make it to make it widely known on the back of a, a very good series over in England. So, um, yeah, it's, look, it's another challenging environment. Um, I find obviously that it's beneficial to to my own uh, coaching role when you've got someone like Graham Ford who's sitting across the table from you. It, it's it's hard not to to benefit from you know, the experience that, that he brings and the knowledge that he brings and how he sees um, the team being shaped, obviously with a, a new captain and, and Andrew Balburnie. Um, again, you know, it was a, a, a tough decision um, 
at the time that he was awarded the captaincy. Uh, obviously, with William having done a magnificent job for a number of years leading the Ireland side. Um, but it's fantastic to see that, that Andrew has taken the baton and is now pushing forward with it. And it's with himself and, and Graham, they are now starting to mould uh, the New Ireland team. Obviously, with a, still having a huge role to play for those senior players, but to see some of the younger players now who we've uh, selected and, and shown faith in, for them now to, to come out uh, at the back end of, of, what, of that series. Um, you know, the, the learning and the experience that they will have gained from that it, it will just be massive. And the, um, the final question I have today is um, a bit of a hypothetical, but I'm asking every coach this. If you could have a former Irish cricketer from another generation playing in their prime in the current Warriors side, who would you select and why? Oh, my goodness. Um, that's, a, that's a fairly tricky one. I suppose I would have to stay probably fairly loyal to uh, the, uh, the, the North West um, region and um, probably would keep it in the family and you look, it would be hard to look past Andrew McBride's father junior and um, in today's um, the way the game goes with a, a left arm spinner who can bat who can field um, I, I just think he'd be worth his weight in gold to have him in, in my current warrior side uh, I think I would be more than happy well, his, his slips catching of recent years on Twitter has uh, <laughs> certainly kept him on the radar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. That was a quick visit to the Northwest today. Thank you very much for joining me, Ian McGregor. No problem, Craig. You're welcome. We hope you enjoyed the show and farewell for now. Thank you.